This is the 21st video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. As we have now created a number of user accounts, groups and network shares, we're at the stage where our Synology NAS has been configured into a state that would be perfectly usable as just a network attached storage device. However, because we have now created a number of network shares, any files or folder structures that we have created will now need to be managed. You will find built into the DSM of your NAS an application called FileStation. FileStation is the default file management tool for Disk Station Manager and is simply a program that will allow us to manage and organize the files and folders stored on our NAS. While FileStation can be directly accessed from within the DSM, like many of the applications written by Synology, FileStation can also be accessed directly from within a computer, mobile or tablet device. However, to do this, we will first need to set up something called an alias. An alias will allow us to log into applications like FileStation directly from within a web browser. Not only will this make it easier for users of our home network, to gain access to applications and services installed on our NAS, it will also make these applications less confusing as we don't have to first load the DSM in order to use an application. So in this video, we're gonna first look at how to load FileStation from within DiskStation Manager. We will then create an alias and demonstrate how to access FileStation from within a number of different web browsers. Before we begin, it should be noted that at this stage of our setup and configuration, our NAS and home network have not been configured for remote access. This means that currently we cannot connect to our Synology NAS remotely via the internet. Instead, when we access either the DSM or FileStation using its alias, these services are only accessible to computers that are directly connected to our home network. Remote access will be something that we look at in future videos but not before we have created a reliable set of backups and configured some security on our Synology NAS. In order for FileStation to be accessible from any computer, mobile phone or tablet on our home network, we are going to need to change a few settings on our NAS. This means that we need to log into the DiskStation Manager using our administrator's credentials. As FileStation, was installed automatically when we first installed DSM onto our NAS. As you can see here, we have an icon for FileStation on the desktop of the DSM. If we load FileStation, you can see that FileStation looks very similar to the file management tools found in macOS, Windows and Linux. If you don't see a FileStation icon on the desktop of your NAS, FileStation can also be accessed via the main menu. Currently, our NAS is configured so that the only way to access FileStation is to first log into the DSM. In order to make FileStation accessible through our web browser, we will first need to open the control panel. And then from within the application section, locate and select application portal. Now under the applications tab, we will find listed all of the applications we currently have installed that are accessible via a web browser. At the moment, FileStation is the only application that we have installed. If we highlight FileStation, then select Edit. Under the General tab, we will find a number of different options that will allow FileStation to be accessible directly from a web browser window. Let's tick the option Enable Customized Alias. You can see that the alias field becomes active and is pre-filled with a suggestion. If you prefer, you can use a different alias simply by typing your alternative alias into this field. For our example, we will leave the alias set to file. This means that we can now use any computer connected to our home network to directly access FileStation from within a web browser by using the address HTTPS 
colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.2 forward slash file. The options enable customized port HTTP and enable customized port HTTPS along with the option enable customized domain all offer alternative methods for accessing Farstation from within a browser window. For now, because we will be using an alias, we will leave these settings disabled. However, we will be returning to these settings when we make our NAS remotely accessible over the internet. As Enable Access Control allows us to restrict a user's access to Farstation or make Farstation accessible only via a specific IP address, for now we are going to leave this option disabled. So let's select OK. You can now see in the alias column that we now have file set as our alias for file station. Let's close control panel and log out of disk station manager. Now from the address bar of our browser, let's type https colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of our NAS forward slash file. As the address that we're connecting to uses HTTPS, we will be connecting to Farstation using a secure connection. However, when we press enter on the keyboard, our browser will inform us that this connection is not private. If we select show details, it is explained that our browser does not consider the certificate being used by our NAS as valid. This is because our NAS is using something called a self-signed certificate. While self-signed certificates are perfectly okay to use, it does mean that our browser cannot confirm with a third party that the website that we're trying to load is being provided by the server that we are trying to access. As access to our NAS is confined to just devices connected to our home network, and we know that the IP address 192.168.1.2 links directly to our Synology NAS, we are going to bypass this warning message. As we are working from within Safari on an Apple Macintosh computer, we're going to click on the link Visit This Website. As we are taking responsibility for accessing this specific site, our computer is now asking us to confirm that we wish to trust the certificate being used by our Synology NAS. When we select Visit Website, we're asked to confirm that we wish to manually add the self-signed certificate that our Synology NAS is currently using to a list of trusted certificates. If we do not wish to be prompted that our NAS is not private when we try and access Farstation, we will need to enter the user credentials for this computer. When we select Update Settings, we are shown the login page for Farstation. If you prefer to work in Firefox, when you try and connect to Filestation using an alias, you will be informed that the connection to the NAS is not secure. By selecting Advanced, we can see that Firefox is informing us that we have an invalid security certificate. To override this warning and then access Filestation, we first need to add Exception and then select Confirm Security Exception. For those working on a Windows 10 computer using Microsoft Edge, when you try and connect to Farstation using an alias, you will be informed that this site is not secure. If we select Details, once again we can see that the browser does not trust the self-signed certificate being used by our NAS. To override this warning and access Farstation, we simply need to select the link Go on to the web page not recommended. Finally, for those that are using Google Chrome to access Farstation with an alias, you will be informed that your connection is not private. By selecting Advanced, we're informed that the security certificate being used by our NAS is not trusted. To bypass this message, we simply need to select Proceed to 192.168.1.2 Unsafe. 
As we mentioned earlier, using self-signed certificates is perfectly safe. But to any users of our home network, these sorts of warning messages can be disturbing. If we were to use a signed certificate, these warning messages would no longer be displayed by our internet browser. So in a future video, we will be taking a look at how we can add signed certificates to our Synology NAS. So now that we've confirmed that our alias is actually working, we are presented with a login page for FileStation. We know that this is the login page for FileStation because of this icon. Let's sign into FileStation using one of the standard user accounts that we created on our Synology NAS. FileStation is now displayed directly from within our browser, but without having to first load the DSM. So to recap, in this video we first demonstrated how to load FileStation from within the DSM. We then created an alias for FileStation to make it easier to load FileStation directly into a web browser. When we attempted to log into FileStation from within our web browser, we first had to review a warning message. After bypassing that warning message, we were finally able to access FileStation. In the next video in this series, we're going to review FileStation and look at the features that are built into this application.